And in huge letters through the rising sun is the word equality. A boy from the hill top comes down to the highest chair. It has all men are equal and no man. <laughs> you like the soap box on it, a young man? I can't even hear what he's saying. <laughs> Just as well. I heard him. He said that the rich are too rich and the poor too poor. <laughs> He's going to fix things. Yeah. He's going to make the rich too poor and the poor too rich. He's going to change God's world. <laughs> What time is it, mister? It's late, baby. At least 16 people have gone in since I've been waiting. Well, they're not all come to see the doctor. Besides, we've got an appointment. He says the rich are too rich and the poor are too poor. <laughs> Do you mean us? <laughs> yeah. You're too poor in having me. I'm far too rich in having you. Come. Doctor. I'm so glad you're coming with me. You're not frightened? Yes, I'm frightened too. Why is it that we who come first still wait? While your wife sees the doctor already? I don't know, unless it's because we had an appointment. Uh, a bourgeois, huh? And we're scum, I suppose. You wait for half an hour while his wife sees the doctor right off. Why don't you wait your turn? Well, I'm willing to. Only we had an appointment. Yeah. Come, we'll find another doctor. But Dr. Sasem is so great. Come when I speak. We'll go where people are more equal, where each one takes his turn. <laughs> I think you've made him angry. <laughs> oh, not you. <laughs> him. <laughs> I saw them stand together in the crowd there. <laughs> Each time she moved to leave, he held her arm the tighter. He wanted to listen to his rights. <laughs> It's best to keep one's place contentedly, isn't it, sir? Oh, not too contented, young man. Uh, ambition is all right. Oh, yes, I know, but if one's satisfied to accept his life peacefully, he's better off, isn't he? Indeed, yes. Nothing very wrong happens to the peaceful man. Yes, that's what I mean, sir. Nothing very wrong will happen. Herr Pinnabe. Yes? While your wife is with the doctor, I'd like a few particulars for the record. Here's your check. Here, say something. Your son can't see you. Young man, uh, do you play pinochle? No, sir. I don't know how. <laughs> you should learn how. You'd find it most interesting when you're tired of everything else. <laughs> your age, please. 23. Will she be much longer? Christian name. Johannes. Women do have it worse than men, don't they? I don't know. I'm not a man. Occupation. Do I buy a woman? <laughs> I'm a clerk. Where? Feinholz, corn merchant. Where? Ducherot. Have you no doctors in Ducherot? Well, doctor says I was so highly recommended. We thought that... He is a good doctor, isn't he? I mean, an understanding... Have you ever been seriously ill? Only when I was a little boy. Measles, mumps... Your mother still living? No. Yes. Have you decided? My stepmother's alive. Father? No. What did he die of? War. Your wife's maiden name? What is your wife's maiden name? I'm sorry. Emma. Emma Merchel. Doctor. 
I believe I received a very long letter from you, Herr Finneberg. Yes, and we're so grateful for the appointment, Doctor. That's, That's quite right. all right, Herr Finneberg. Perhaps I should let your wife tell you the diagnosis. Hmm. Don't you worry. Everything will be all right. Oh, thank you, Doctor. It will be some time before your child is born. But, Doctor, I thought... We both think... Doctor, I only earn 180 marks a month. I know it isn't much. Yet, the three have lived on less than that. But, how? That's your problem, Herr Pinneberg. Good luck, my dear. Fifteen marks. A hundred and eighty marks. It isn't much, he says. And takes fifteen of them for himself. There are other doctors. Oh, there are. Even better ones. More understanding. More humor. You're angry with me. Aren't you? No, I'm not, Lem. No, oh, no. I... I'm disappointed. Aren't you? I'm hungry. At least I know now why I crave salmon all the time. <laughs> Too far for I you thought walk. we were going to save money. It's beyond the outskirts of the town, Winston. You couldn't walk that far. You get in. I'll see about your trunk and things. Hmm? Oh, can't we have the top down? Such a lovely day. Herr Pinneberg ordered a closed car. Otherwise, it would be down. But if you say so... Oh, please. no. Uh, please don't bother. It's all right if Herr Pinneberg said so. I think I'm going to like to shrug. It's really just one long street. Is it nice where we're going to live? I've already told you. It's a little cottage right in the country and belongs to the widow Schadenhofer. Tell me about it. Oh, she's very particular about her furniture. It's also very old. <laughs> You'll have to sit gently on the chairs on account of the springs. Oh, no, I won't. I'll sit on your knees. You're the one to be careful. Oh, and you can't wind up the clock under the glass case. I won't have to because I'll never care what time it is. They look nice, don't they? Mm. They're very cheap. I'll always wear mine. Don't you? Yes, Lemchen. Always. Oh, driver, stop, please. <laughs> look, darling, Klein Olsen Company. Isn't that where you work? Let's get out so I can see. No, Clemson, no, not now. Go on, please. I. It's because I have to work there tomorrow that I don't want to look at it today. I understand, darling. Right on the minute. Sure, and I bet all Klein Holtz won't even look in this morning. If we were two minutes late, the old egghead would be standing up there waiting for us. Well, maybe he isn't up yet. Don't worry. He gets up early just to see if we're on time. Good morning, Herr Kleinholz. Good morning, Herr Kleinholz. Is Pinneberg not here yet? No, Herr Kleinholz. It's just 8 o'clock, Herr Kleinholz. It's after 8 o'clock. Just one minute after it. You yourself should be at your desk on the hour. Not just coming in. So. Come 
Gauntlet, Papa. Yeah. Marie, why don't you get your Papa's slippers? Aren't your feet cold? Well, <laughs> not half so cold as your coffee. Where are my slippers? Come, 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 come. I can't stand the sight of that girl much longer. You can't stand no more liquor either. Oh, but I'm chilled through, Mama, chilled through. Then put your robe on, Papa. Oh, Here it is. It's too warm for that thing. You make a good wife, Mary. Thank you, Papa. Yeah, you're just dumb enough to make a very good wife. <laughs> Oh, that's what I'd like to know. Then maybe I could fix it so as to get rid of her. You ought to be ashamed of yourself talking that way. Is it her fault that no man comes here? Well, is it mine? <laughs> Didn't I discharge three steady married men? Didn't I hire three lazy bachelors to take their places? Yes, and not one of them has taken her out yet. Well, haven't I hinted often enough? Haven't I told them that I'm getting old? I want my daughter to marry so her, her husband could be my manager? You told them that? Yes, yes, I told... I told Schultz. I know one Schultz, Papa. No, well, I, I told Lauterbach. I don't like Lauterbach. Did you tell Pinneberg? Yeah, I told Pinneberg. Well. I like him Pinneberg, Papa. <laughs> yeah, now, there's a girl for you. You try to find a man for her, and she has a choice. Yeah. Very well, Mary, you shall have Pinneberg. Thank you, Papa. Uh, not because he likes you, but jobs are very scarce nowadays. Papa, when I get older, Will you hire women help? <laughs> Sounds lucky for you, Pinneberg. He's in a better humor. Now, what do you suppose made him laugh so? It's the first time in weeks. Perhaps Frau Kleinold's painfully scolded herself. Or maybe little Junior broke his leg. Or maybe Marie just told him about her marriage to you. That's it. And she favors you, too, Pinneberg. Ah, uh, stop it, please. I'm not interested in Marie. I have no thoughts for her future. Aren't you concerned about your own? Yes. Yes, I am. Say, aren't we all these days? Yes, and that would make me think kindly of Marie at times. I don't want to lose my job. Nor I. I don't dare lose mine. Say. Say, why don't we all make an agreement? Agreement? Yeah. Let's solemnly promise that we'll all three refuse Marie. Hmm? He can't fire us for not marrying her. Let's agree that if he does fire one of us, the other two will give notice. On our honor. I'll agree to that. I too. Well, that makes things very simple, doesn't it? By firing one, I get rid of all of you. Oh, let me see. Which one shall I give notice to? Pinnebag, why were you late today? It was my clock, sir. You see, the alarm... Oh, stop! That is the worst lie of all. Salt? If I fire Pinneberg, do you leave also? Oh, no, sir. I said we... Lauterbach, if I fire Schultz, do you leave? Oh, no, sir. Ah, that's how you keep your bargain. Well, one of you will be fired, and soon. And all of you know why. Uh, Schultz, you go up to the loft and help Cruz to get five ton of crushed meal in the sack. No, 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 let, let Lauterbach go. He looks like his own corpse again today. Lifting sacks will do him good. He will march better tonight. Schultz, you go down to the station, order four three-ton trucks for tomorrow morning. We must get that wheat down to the mill. Go on, go on. Uh, you writing about the clover, eh? Huh? Yes. No, leave that to Lauterbach. But we must get busy and sack the corn. The women will help. Tie the sacks. Yes, Herr Kleinholz. Oh, uh, 
<clears throat> Marie is very handy at that sort of thing. <laughs> She's handy at most things. <laughs> uh, not, not, not pretty, perhaps, but uh, useful, eh? eh? <laughs> uh, certainly, Herr <laughs> uh, Marie, Marie. Uh, life is a very serious problem for young folks today. Uh, yes. I don't think so, Herr Trenholz. If one's peaceful and tolerant and minds his own affairs, life ought to be very simple. Yes, Papa. Come down here. Herr Finneberg wants you to help with the sacks. Oh, well, all right, Papa. <laughs> I'll be there in less than a minute. You speak of peace and tolerance. And the whole world is full of unrest and bigotry. To say nothing of poverty, if you are not prepared. Have you thought of the future, Pennybag? Oh, yes, sir. Uh-huh. And uh, how do you feel about it? Oh, I'm happy, sir. I have much to look forward to. I... Perhaps I don't understand, Herr Trenholz. What do you mean? Oh, I mean the thing I've hinted uh, about, uh, this, uh, this firing business. There's not enough work for three of you here. Now, uh, which one would you let go if you were in my place? Oh, I can't say, Herr Kleinholz. No, I couldn't speak against men I'm working with. Would you fire yourself? Would you want to walk the streets and starve? In peace and tolerance? Eh? <laughs> now, think it over. You are engaged by the quarter. That would mean a notice on August the 15th for October the 1st, wouldn't it, sir? <laughs> yes, Herr <I'll> Kleinholz. <laughs> <laughs> Do you really want me to help you, Herr Penbeck? Why, yes. That'll be nice, Fräulein Marie. <laughs> Peaceful here, Lemchen. I can't find a poorly cloak. <laughs> Must you find one? Well, good luck. Come on, help me find one. No. I don't need one. I was lucky enough in finding you. You're sweet sometimes. <laughs> not all the time. Hmm? No, not all the time. Oh, I bet there's lots of cloak over there. What's the matter, Lemshin? Hmm? Oh, look. Here we are in the woods with picnic and music and still... You're not happy. What is it? Suppose you tell me. I'll tell you what, dear. I don't know what you want to ask. You know. I don't. Please ask. You know. All right. Don't. Um... You remember when we were married? It was only a week ago, I said, didn't I? Remember what we promised? Yes, of course. You promised that we'd always be honest and not have any secrets from each other. You said that. Well, aren't you going to be honest? Yes, of course I am. Well, then why don't you begin now? Why did we have to drive from the station in a closed car? And why did you keep your hand in your pocket so people couldn't see your ring? And why can't I go to town with you at night? And why will people be offended because we're married? Why? Lemshin, please, I'd rather not tell you. Oh, but darling, you must. If we begin by having secrets now, we'll be telling lies soon. Tell me, darling, is it something to do with a girl? Yes, Lemshin. Yes, but not in the way you think. How then? Tell me. Oh, can't I tell you all about it tomorrow? 
so tomorrow will be too late. Do you think I can sleep and my brain is all muddled? From the day we arrived, my heart has been tearing at me. And it's not good for me now. Gretchen, dear. You ask me what's the matter, well, that's it. That's why I cry and lose my temper. I can't laugh when I'm worried like this. I, I can't cook. I can't do anything. Because you're jealous? Oh, no, no, I'm not jealous. I'm just bothered about you, that's all. Listen. Now listen. I'll tell you all about it. Look. Herr Kleinhorst, my boss. He's got a daughter, understand? Yes. And in order to marry her off, he has three single clerks working for him. Now, none of us like her. But all of us know what a job means today. Are you listening? Yes. All right. Well, now, the daughter, well, her name's Marie, and she's dumb in everything else except one thing. She likes me best. Do you? Uh, you're listening. I'm talking. So, her father has decided that I marry Marie. Do you love her? Yeah, of course I don't. But we need my job, so well, I must pretend... Oh. oh, darling. Oh. Oh. I'm so happy now. Lemshin. Oh. Yeah? Look, Lemshin. Look, I found it. seen a ghost. No, no ghost. Kleinholz. Anne-Marie? Anne-Marie. I love my work. <laughs> 